In this video, we look at the importance of using meaningful identifier names. So take a look at these three lines of code here. Are you able to tell me what the program is doing? Well, that may sound like an odd question at first, like if we take the bottom one in yellow, you would say to me, well, of course I know what the program is doing. It's taking the contents of B, timesing it by C, and timesing that by D, and storing the result in A. And although you understand the mathematics behind the calculation, what is the purpose of the actual program? Well, the answer is you don't know, because the variable names aren't very descriptive. Here's the top line of code, rewritten with meaningful identifier names. It's exactly the same line, but now it reads monthly pay equals basic pay plus overtime minus tax plus national insurance. You suddenly have a much stronger indication what the nature and purpose of this program is. It's clearly a program dealing with helping to calculate monthly pay for an employee. In a similar way, the second line of code, once given a meaningful identifier names, starts to make a lot more sense. It's prompting someone for the first name and surname, and then joining those together with a space in the middle and storing the result. The final program suddenly becomes more obvious with its purpose as soon as we add descriptive variable names. Instead of A equals B times C times D, we now have the volume of a fish tank is equal to the width times the height times the depth. So it probably seems obvious now why we should be using meaningful identifier names. And indeed, you will pick up marks for this in the exam. Variables and constants start to make sense. The names of subroutines, and by that we mean procedures and functions, tell the reader what they are. It makes the code easy to understand, and therefore it makes the code easier to debug, test and maintain. Now, there are no strict conventions as to how you should name identifiers, but try to stick to one method and be consistent. 